Living Waters presents On the Box. Hey, welcome to another edition of On the Box. It is Monday, beginning of a new week. Ray, uh, A, B, C, or D, how was this weekend at Huntington Beach? Oh, it was a B. Yeah? Yeah, it was a buzzing B. We really had lots of hecklers, and it was uh, very enjoyable, and we thank, uh, for those, thank those who prayed for us. All right. Yeah. And uh, Chad, over in the foxhole, did you preach this weekend? Sure did. I would concur. Today was, I mean, I'm sorry, Saturday was a, a B. I'd say it was sort of like the day of the, hey, I'm a Christian, and the way that you're doing it is wrong. So we got to go through the scriptures a little bit and see how Jesus really did it. So you so had a lot of uh, quote unquote Christian hecklers this last weekend. Yeah, the whole uh, you know, God is love. You know, you shouldn't be doing it this way. And we go through the scriptures and you know, kind of ponder, hmm, why was Stephen martyred or why was Paul stoned and left for dead? Why in Mark chapter ten did Jesus uh, take the man through the law? And they usually just go away at that point. They go, oh, well, you're, you're just doing it wrong, and they, they want to run away. They don't want to reason from the scriptures like a good Berean and test all things. So. Right. We'd better say what ABCs are. Uh, a, a, yeah, a is absolutely excellent, just the most neat day you can imagine. B is really, really good. C is average. D is a bit depressing. <laughs> and E is when a 13-year-old girl bursts into tears because you called her a lying thief, and her <laughs> father takes her away, and she's crying her eyes out, leaving you with the crowd. Oh, That's an E. Tony. <laughs> yeah. That just made me think of the... Uh, you gotta, you gotta oh. share that, that that story you shared with me about your <laughs> open air, the one that just didn't go okay. so well All when your pastor right. was okay. there. Okay, yeah. Uh, Here's well, an E. I'll, I'll share that in just a second, but first I want to uh, let everybody know that today we're giving away classic comfort. Uh, Sixty of your messages on mm-hmm. uh, CD MP3 format. Insomniac's dream. And so <laughs> just listen to it over and over and over again. Not you know, okay. uh, before I started serving with the ministry, I listened to just about all of the messages on there. It was very, very encouraging. Oh, Great that's, resource. That's nice of you to say Good that. Good resource. Tony. So email us at on the box at livingwaters.com. Give us your full name and your mailing address. Uh, Brad, behind the scenes, uh, behind the camera, will pick three. Uh, lucky people. Oh, do, is it blessed. lucky? Blessed. <laughs> blessed people at random. Lucky blessed people. And uh, we'll be announcing the winners uh, <laughs> later on in the program on the box at livingwaters.com. Also, you can email us at the same address uh, if you have any suggestions for the program, segments you would like to see, questions you have if you're not in the chat room. Just email us at on the box at livingwaters.com. So, Ray, I had an E day one day at a uh, park out in the uh, San Fernando Valley. I had finally convinced my pastor Mm -hmm. to come out with me to see what open air preaching was like. And uh, so about uh, 10 of the members of the church came out with my, you know what's happening. So about (laughs) about 10 of the members of my church came out along with the pastor. Uh, There were more of us than there were of anyone else in the park, so I wasn't going to draw too big a crowd. And uh, I was still relatively new to open air preaching, Mm -hmm. but I was convinced that I was going to be able to convince my pastor this was the right thing to do. And so I started doing trivia. Uh, a few people come up and uh, answer the questions. I'm able to give away a few dollars. Uh, one man comes up and is going to take the good person test for 20 bucks, mm-hmm. and uh, he fails abysmally, right? And the conversation was going really well. Took him through the gospel. Everything seemed fine. And w- when I finished, he said, uh, you're not going to give me the 20 bucks, are you? And I said, no. And that was before I learned to give a consolation prize, <laughs> 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 to give them something. Uh, and I said, no, sir, you didn't pass a good person test, so uh, no, I'm not going to give you the $20. You're not going to give me the money. Uh, no, sir, I'm not going to give you the money. And the, I could feel the tension building in yeah. the church members and the pastors <laughs> as this <laughs> conflict is brewing to the surface here. And he has a little girl, probably about two years old with him. Mm-hmm. He picks up his little girl. He shoves her towards me, holds her in the air, and says, Honey, I was going to take you out for ice cream, but because this man's not going to give me the $20, you're not getting any ice cream. And he puts his little girl down, and he walks away without her. Yeah, that's an F. That's an F? <laughs> yeah, that's an F. Fail. Yeah, you should have seen them. It took forever for me to convince those same members of my church to come out with me again. So it was then that I think I started tell giving them you the Tell them you're going out for ice cream with them <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> yeah, so I've had a couple of F days. Oh, Pro- they're horrible. Uh, have you had several E's or I've, F's? I've had enough. Over the years? I don't even want to talk about them. Then we're not going <laughs> to. No. no. <laughs> they're horrible. Uh, they're, that, what they do is they, they leave you thinking, I'm never going to open air preach again. Yeah. That's the feeling you get. And you just pick up, stand up, and do it again. Do it again. Mm-hmm. That's right. Got to get back up on the box. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it. 
Well, in our first segment, we're going to uh, share with you a video from Living Waters University. A uh, man by the name of Jorgen. Is that mm -hmm. how we pronounce his name? Jorgen. Jorgen. Uh, someone that Ray's witnessed to many a times. And uh, we're going to show you this video, and then Ray has some uh, very interesting information to share about Jorgen. This witnessing clip is really pretty fascinating. It's a man named Jargen, he's German, and he actually lived through the horrifying experience of having his chest cut open by the knife of a stranger. And he lives to tell the tale. Watch this. Jorgen, are you a spiritual person? No, I'm not. Are you an atheist? Yes, I am. Do you know what the golden rule is? Of what? The golden rule. No, I, I don't know. But You've ever heard of it? To me. Um, you shall love your neighbors yourself. Well, I love some of my neighbors and some I don't. So some people you don't like? True. Now, why are you an atheist? Because I don't believe in God. So you believe nothing created everything? I believe in the uh, evolution theory. So what created everything in the beginning? Well, I wasn't there, so I don't have the details. So you don't know what created everything? No. But obviously it wasn't nothing, because nothing can't create anything. So something created everything in the beginning? Maybe. So you're not an atheist? You believe something created everything? Yeah, but I don't lose any sleep of thinking about who and what might have done that. Well, you should. Why? Because you've offended him by sinning against his law. None of Jorgen, how many, are you a good person, Jorgen? I heard you a lot of times, Sandra. I've done the things you ask other people. So you've lied and stolen? So has everybody else and the sun. Yeah, but you're not going to answer for everyone on Judgment Day. You're going to have to answer for yourself, Jorgen. Are you going to be guilty or innocent on Judgment Day? I mean, have, you, have you looked at a woman and lusted for her? When is Judgment Day? Oh, it's coming. When? Sure as hell it's coming. God knows when it's coming. You mean you're referring to when you die? Because as far as I'm concerned, when I'm physically dead, I'm dead and that's the end of it. So. What if, you're, what if you're wrong? Then so be it. Well, Why should could, I concern myself with that now? Well, do you care about your life? Yeah. Do you love living? Yeah, of course. Jorgen, Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? He said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? I'm sure every man has at one time or another. Yeah, but have you? Yeah. Have you used God's name in vain? Yeah. Even though you don't believe in him? I think it's more a matter of speech. Yeah. So I don't want you to end up in hell. You seem like a nice guy. I'd hate God to give you what you deserve on Judgment Day. You're a lying thief, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. Whatever will happen, will happen. Like I say, que sera, sera. Yeah, but that's a song. And that's, huh? that's Hollywood. Don't you don't want to put your faith in Hollywood and in love songs? Come on. When you, you want to put your faith in the Savior because he can, he can wash away your sins so you're clean on Judgment Day so God can let you live forever. Why would I, well, who wants to live forever? I do. I don't, have, I don't have enough money to live forever. How old are you, Jorgen? 68. How long have you got to live? Probably another 20 years. Are you afraid of dying? No, not at all. If somebody would tell me you're going to die next month, I said, okay, I've lived a full life and have very few regrets, so I'm ready to go. So you wouldn't have any treatment if you found you had cancer? You just yield to it, say, so what? Well, I, I just had a triple bypass. So, but no. No, I mean, if, if I... Why did you have a triple bypass? Because I had a breathing problem. I used to jog here up and down, and all of a sudden one day I had a hard time breathing, and so I went to a hospital and they said you have a clogged arteries. But hang on, you said that you don't mind dying. You should have just put up with it and died. Yeah, but it wasn't severe enough. It wasn't like, like at, uh, cancer and you're going to die in a few weeks. Yeah, but look what you, you let some person you don't know cut into your chest so you could live longer. Oh, you know why? Because... It prevented me from living my life the way I wanted to live it, the way I lived the last 40 years, running and being physically active and everything. So you're thankful for a healthy life? Yeah. Who too? I contribute to having a healthy life by being active, by being physically yeah, fit. Who are, you, who are you grateful to for life? God gave you life. Maybe so. So listen. But you can prove your point any more than I can. Yes, I can. No. Hang on, you can't say I can't because I can't. Let's prove it. <laughs> All you have to do 
is do what the Bible says, repent and trust in him who died on the cross for you. If you'll do that, if you'll repent and trust in the Savior, say, God, forgive my sins and willfully put your trust in Jesus Christ, God will reveal himself to you. This is what Jesus said. He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me, and he that loves me will be loved by my Father. I too will love him and will reveal myself to him. So there's the gauntlet. If you obey the gospel, God will reveal himself to you. I feel compelled to do any of the things you just said. Oh, well, let me leave the ball in your court. Maybe tonight you'll have a little kind of minor heart attack on your bed and you'll think about the issues of life and death and you'll say, I better get right with God before death seizes upon me because this is so important. Remember, Jesus said, watch it a prophet of man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul. Hey, Jordan, thank you so much for talking to me. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a good day. Now, Ray, Jorgen is someone that you've witnessed to a number of times over a span of the last, what, two, three years? Yeah, he would sit uh, just by the wall there and read books, uh, very healthy, uh, except for his heart. I uh, he used to go for walks a lot, and uh, very likable guy. And notice in the interview, he s I said, how long do you think you live for? He says, i got another 20 years. Well, 23rd of uh, December last year, about three weeks ago, hit by a car into oncoming traffic, knocked on the ground, another car came and killed him, so he's gone. And it really brought back to me the whole thought that when we talk to people, we've got to rem remember what this is about. I found that experience ex tragic and extremely sobering because so often I say to people, you don't know when you're going to die. Get right with God today. And yet it's something I just have to keep in the forefront of my memory. And uh, so for the Christian out there who's watching, thinking, well, you know, I, I'll start witnessing tomorrow or I'll take that step another day or I'll... I'll look for another opportunity to share the gospel with that person. What would you say to them? Well, there every day 150,000 people die, and it may be someone that you're going to witness to tomorrow, and today is the opportunity. So don't hold back and be earnest and let them hear tears in your voice. Let them see tears in your eyes. Don't be afraid to say to someone, please get right with God, because we should. We, we should be pleading with people uh, in humility and, and uh, asking them to come to their senses and think about the issues of life and, of life and death because everyone is like Jorgen. Ah, oh, death is something that's far off. No, it's not. We walk in the sh a shadow of death, all of us. Every day. Um, says of Jesus, uh, to them that sat in the shadow of death, a light has sprung up. And sinners, all of us, sit in the shadow of death. And when Christ, who is the light of the world, comes to us, when Jesus comes to us, his light banishes the shadow of death. And we've got to look to those that are still sitting there. They're not going anywhere. They're waiting for death to seize upon them. And if we care, we've got to reach out to them. Yeah, evangelism isn't a hobby. Oh, no, no. It's our, it's, it's our life. It should be. Uh, I like to bring it back to people in, a, in the Titanic lifeboats. We shouldn't be polishing the brass. If there's people drowning around us, we should order our priorities, and it should be the priority of every Christian to seek and save that which is lost w in a desperate way. Well, we've got some uh, good questions coming into the chat room today about evangelism in some uh, pretty tough situations. Chad, what? give us one of those questions. Yeah, one of the questions I saw pass by a little bit ago is how do you witness to a friend that has an atheist friend that recently died? Kind of timely considering what we're just talking about. What do you think, Ray? Um, just with sensitivity, but everybody has got somebody who recently died. I mean, it's all over the place, this death thing. And often we, we think, oh, I can't touch on the subject of death because this person's just lost someone that they care about. However, it's making them think about their own mortality. Right. So it's a wonderful opportunity. So never even hint that someone that died close to them went to hell. That's God's business. Just say, God will do what's right on the day of judgment. And what's going to happen to you? Has this made you think and take the opportunity? And uh, Chad, I think there was another one that came in that was similar to that, but in a specific situation. Yeah, someone's got a funeral coming up that they're going to be speaking at. So they were curious, how would you preach at a funeral? Right? Yeah, same thing. Don't, don't talk about the fate of the, uh, of the person who's died if they weren't a Christian. Just... Put that aside, speak well of them, etc., and uh, if, if you know the person. And then take that opportunity to, to talk about how Jesus was the undertaker's nightmare and how all of us have to uh, face death, and it's something we all fear, and that God in his great mercy made a way for us to have everlasting life and just preach the gospel with all your heart. Yeah. Because 
at that point, a funeral is a, is a, a wonderful time to preach because everybody's thinking about their own mortality. I uh, recently had an opportunity to uh, uh, officiate the memorial for one of my uncles. And mm. We had been estranged for many, many years, if, uh, weren't close. Uh, but uh, my cousin asked me to come to officiate. And it was a small, small gathering. And, and uh, while I, uh, I never knew my uncle real well, um, there wasn't any indication that he really made any you know, profession of faith in, in Christ, you know, recently. Mm. Uh, but like you said, I, I can't assign anyone to heaven or hell. I mean, it would be totally inappropriate right. you know, for me to do that. And so what I did is I, I encouraged the people who were there uh, by saying, look, if my uncle could say anything to you right now, it would be don't miss heaven. Mm -hmm. So regardless of where he is eternally, the same would be true if a person is in hell and they could warn anybody. You know, we have this, the story of uh, Lazarus and the poor man. You know, he would warn them right. not to go to hell. And uh, if they were in heaven, of course, they would say, don't miss heaven. Mm -hmm. So then I use that to, to take the conversation away from the deceased and put it on the person, the people who are listening, so I could share the gospel with them. Well, that's true, officiating. Well done. You like that, officiating? Mm -hmm. Chad, any thoughts on, on that? Uh, well, I haven't witnessed any funerals, but uh, I've ha I have had that challenge from people where they say, you know, I have a family member that wasn't a Christian, so are you telling me uh, they went to hell? Uh, one I remember was this fellow that I met at Irvine Spectrum. He was uh, another fellow in the, in the military, special operations, and his father was uh, a Jew, and uh, he said that if his father went to hell, that he would uh, gladly follow him into uh, the depths of hell because uh, he loved his dad so much. And so what I just point out, you never know what God's done in somebody's life in those last moments. You know, you can really only speculate. And I walked away feeling really bummed out. I just didn't feel very good about our conversation. And I ended up getting a call from him months later. And he was real happy. He left a, a message on my phone. And he says, I don't know if you remember me or not, but... Uh, we met at Irvine Spectrum. I just want you to know I'm a born-again Christian, and I'm going to a non-denominational church now. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's real awesome. And that just kind of goes to show, too, that you don't have to look for fruit right there in the moment. You never know what God's going to do, how he's going to add increase. Yeah. I got a, another question from the, uh, the chat room. The question is, uh, uh, this guy's a, a Christian, and he says that his mother often calls him uh, not humble. And he asks, how, do you, how can you be humble according to the Bible, and I pulled up uh, Philippians chapter 2, mm. verses 5 through 8. I think this is how you can be humble according to what Scripture says. It says, uh, Let this mind be in you, which also is in Jesus Christ, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. I think Paul's saying to emulate Jesus Christ, to uh, be humble in that way, to be a, a living sacrifice, Paul goes on to say in Romans 12, uh, 1. And the funny thing about those living sacrifices is uh, we tend to like to try and crawl off the altar. <laughs> uh, you know, many of us, uh, Ray, but I'm sure many of the people watching, have unsaved family members. Mm. Uh, you do as well. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how do you show yourself humble and loving to unsaved family members? I think you'd be a servant to them. <clears throat> I don't know the situation, wh whether it's justified with his mum saying this guy's not humble or not. I don't know how he's speaking to her, if it's a, in a condescending way, but you've got to be extra careful with your mum. I think humility is just seeing yourself in truth. You know, if any of us are proud of anything, say, what are you talking, what are you proud of? Other people will tell us why we shouldn't be proud. Mm -hmm. So it's just a conceit. It's, it's not seeing ourselves. It's, it's walking in vanity. And we just need to see ourselves in truth, and that helps to keep us humble. But humility is a weird thing. If you think you've got it, you've just lost it. Now, could it also be true that the unsaved family member is saying you're not humble simply because you're declaring truth to them? Yeah, she could use any excuse. After she's got the pride thing down, there'll be another thing. You know, you can't judge me or whatever. So, yeah, you just got to be go the extra mile, especially with your mum and dad. So be a servant, do things you don't normally do for them, clean their car, help them across the road. If they want to be helped across the road, do the dishes, mow the lawn, be a servant and uh, uh, in humility. Yeah, good advice. Uh, Chad, we got time for at least another one. Yeah, there's a, a question I saw go by. What do you say to somebody that just continuously says, prove it, <coughs> prove it? Well, oh, okay. Right? You, yeah, yeah. you get that. I'm, you and Chad and those of us who open air preach, I mean, 
we hear that a lot. What do you say? God backs up his message with proof, uh, and they can prove it if they want, but they don't want. Uh, the wicked will not seek after God through the pride of his countenance. It doesn't say he can't find God. It's just that he won't. He's like a thief that doesn't want to bump into a policeman. So Christianity can be proven. God says, prove me now. And remember John fourteen twenty one is our uh, scripture that, that God keeps his word. Jesus said, he that, um, has my commandments and keeps them. He that loves me and he that loves me will be loved by my father. I too will love him and will reveal myself to him. So if they want proof, they want proof. It's there. It's like the old fork up the light socket trick. If someone says, I don't believe in electricity, say, here's a fork. There's a light socket. You can have the proof. Away you go. <laughs> and the fork is faith. You know, just repent and trust in God, and Jesus will manifest himself to you and make a new heart uh, with new desires. Yeah. Well, Go ahead, Chad. What a peculiar thing this is, too, because, you know, the existence of God or the truth of Christianity doesn't land or fall based off of what kind of proof a Christian could offer. Because when you think about it, there's a, a friend of ours out there, Cy Tim Brigantate, Kate, I think his name yeah. <laughs> goes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Uh, he says, you know, when, when you provide evidence, think about where you provide evidence in the world. He says you provide evidence in a courtroom. And when you're in your courtroom, uh, who plays judge and jury? Well, when, when you're asking for evidence for God, you're, you're basically trying to play judge and jury over God. And what man can do that? What man can shake his puny fist up at God and say, you know, I'll decide. I'll look at the evidence here. Uh, the scripture says that the, the fool is said in his heart. There is no God. And if somebody's curious about whether or not Christianity is true, well, th there is a way that they could find out that, like uh, Ray pointed out, they, they need to repent and put their faith and trust in the Savior. They won't know any other way. It's kind of like asking, uh, you know, how do I get to such and such station at 99.5? Well, you can't get there at 99.6. You can't get there at 99.4. You're going to have to repent, put your faith and trust in the Savior. You've got to dial it right on in. And until they do that, they won't know what we know the self-authenticating Holy Spirit that bears witness. Yeah, and we also know that they already know that God exists. The Word of God testifies Absolutely. to that. They, they're merely suppressing the truth in their unrighteousness. And remember that so many people came to Jesus and give us a sign. You know, give us the proof. And Jesus said, no sign's going to be given to you, but the, sign, the sign of sign Jonah, of which is a, 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 a type of the gospel. And that's what is the power of God to salvation. And that's what the proof is. Yeah. You know, every once in a while, Ray, we get uh, some unreasonable hecklers out there. No. Uh, yes. And uh, there is a video making its way through YouTube. Uh, over two million hits. Uh, the young man who's in this video, quite the entrepreneur, has now developed a t-shirt with this little slogan that he used to heckle this uh, lady. Now, we don't know the lady. We don't know what she was preaching or what kind of gospel she was preaching. But uh, let's show you an example of an unreasonable heckler, and then we'll talk about how to handle it. Close on both. Did it come in? Okay. The word has no condition. Yeah. If you you ain't got no pancake mix. If you go, you ain't got no pancake mix. If you go, show me where the pancake mix is. If you go to the store, there's no pancake mix in there. You're deceiving all these people. There's no pancake mix in there. Stop lying to these people. I am the word of God. They want pancake mix. I'm sorry. You ain't got no pancake mix. Oh my God. I'm not talking about that. You know, the reviler, God says, no reviler will be. You ain't got no pancake mix. Now, Brad uh, shared this video on YouTube, got quite a, or Facebook rather, got quite a conversation going. There uh, were some who thought. Uh, uh, you know Brad's idea of having a box of cake, uh, pancake mix with you, and saying, "Well, yeah, I got, I got your pancake mix." Somehow thought that that would be mocking uh, the heckler. How do you handle someone like that? Well, let's bury this pancake. Let's bury oh. <laughs> <laughs> pancakes and puppies. <laughs> we bury them all. You know, I, I think it's tragic that this stupid little clip got two million views. I mean, it just shows the mentality of people out He's there. He's selling T-shirts now for eighteen bucks. Eighteen bucks? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, so there's a Brad side. Hey, there he is. Um. I just got to say, God bless this woman for her boldness, and uh, um, I just think we can learn from this. The first thing is that I wouldn't hold a Bible when I preach. I used to hold a Bible when I preach, but I don't do it anymore. And the reason for this is that man looks on the outward appearance, God looks on the heart. So when people see someone holding a Bible, they're going to have prejudicial thoughts. It elicits the thought, this person that's standing here speaking is a anti-homosexual, homophobic, fundamentalist, Bible basher, anti-choice, 
uh, anti-science, narrow-minded nutcase. That's the impression they're going to get because she's holding the Bible. So what, what's happened is he's come up and he's mocked her, and not only is he mocking her, if you watch the crowd, they all join in. And we're living in, in what's called the last days, I would assume. And the Bible says in the last days shall come scoffers who are walking after their own lusts. And so what we have to do is begin in the natural. And that's what I try and do. Don't hold up anything like a Bible that's going to elicit mockery from people who have had their minds or heads brainwashed into thinking Christians are nothing but knuckle draggers. And uh, I try and engage people and reason with them. And then after beginning with the natural, go to the spiritual. And the second thing I think we can learn from this is that that wouldn't have happened if she had been elevated. If she had been on a box, that wouldn't have happened. Many times I've had people do this before I had a box. They'll come up and they'll stand in front of you and go like that. And I used to be on a ladder uh, before I got to the soapbox. For 12 years, preached on a ladder. So a guy would come up to me and go like this while I was preaching and try and stop me preaching to the crowd. So I'd just go up a step of the ladder. <laughs> and it made the crowd laugh. So <clears throat> it's very important to elevate yourself if you're going to open your preach. Otherwise, you'll get crazy people like this pancake guy come up and just stop the word going out. And uh, you notice that Ezra stood on an uh, elevation when he preached the law. John, the, John Wesley wanted elevation. I read in, his, uh, in one of his books, um, Harry said, I got a crowd, but I couldn't find elevation. You look at Whitfield, paintings of Whitfield preaching, he had elevation. So elevate yourself so that you won't be hindered like this poor lady was hindered. So you're up on the box. And uh, you've got the elevation. You still have someone like this. Uh, maybe their voice is louder than yours. They're relentless. They will not stop. They will not let you get a word in edgewise. What do you do? I would have let him do his pancake mix thing and just run out of time. Um, often they've got nothing to say. They're just there to mock and bounce off whatever you say. So I say, okay, look, would you like to stand up on the box and tell everyone how you don't think we've got the right pancake recipe? And I'll just stand over here and watch you. And they usually dry up. Uh, they won't get up in the box. And if they do, they make fools of themselves because they've got no positive message to preach. Um, just wait, be patient, and when he's wound down, he might go back and stand in the crowd. If he starts up again, say, oh, you want to talk about pancakes? Up you come, come on, let's hear how good you are. And They don't have the courage of their convictions. Hmm. Good advice. Hey, do we have uh, winners for today's contest? Whoa. All right, winners. Hey, pull them on up here. Uh, first winner is... Sorry. Sorry who? <laughs> <laughs> Someone me on. Christian Pruitt. Hey, Christian. You know, Christian is uh, taller than Todd Friel. Really? Yeah. Isn't tragic for and, him. And weighs probably four times as much. I mean, just a monster of a man, but the <laughs> biggest heart up there in Colorado preaching the gospel. Great guy. Does he get any heckless? Uh, well, he's already got the elevation, so <laughs> I think he can handle it. Kimberly Nixon and Ed Lease. Do you know those people, Tony? Uh, I know Ed. <laughs> Come on, if more of you watch and more of you play, less of my friends are going to win our free stuff. So email us at onthebox at livingwaters.com during the show. Mm -hmm. If you email us and ask for the giveaway after the show, well, the show's over and kind of defeats the purpose. Mm -hmm. so I got a point or two to bring up about Let's do uh, it. what happened with that, that lady. Okay. Uh, one would be a, a sort of a, a tip when you're out there is uh, don't be timid. Uh, you know, when Navy SEALs are over in Iraq, we don't hang our heads low when we're walking down the street and look vulnerable. We have a, a very confident posture about ourselves, and a lot of times when we would capture the bad guys and bring them back, uh, they would say they knew to leave us alone. They didn't want anything to do with us, uh, but sometimes... Uh, you know, the, the Marines or uh, the Army guys that were walking around hanging with their heads low. They've been uh, overseas for, you know, 10, 12, 14 months. They're, they're kind of getting lackadaisical. They, they make themselves sort of a, a glutton for that punishment. They, uh, they seem timid and they, they, they get attacked. Um, and another thing, no matter how good your message is, Jesus says this. He says that a, a disciple is not above his teacher nor a servant above his master. If they've called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more would they call those of his household? So there is, really is no perfect thing that you could say to totally avoid these things. Uh, but just remember, blessed are those who uh, revile and persecute you, say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Jesus said that standing from a mount.
He was standing on something. That's right. He had elevation. (laughs) Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, well, we're about out of time for today's uh, episode of On the Box. On behalf of Ray and Chad, I want to thank you for joining us today. Tell your friends. uh, We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 1130 to 12 Pacific time. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to have Mark Spence sitting in for Ray. And so that ought to be interesting. Mark is uh, always an interesting conversation. That ought to be fun. Yes. So until tomorrow, have a great day. Living Waters presents On the Box.